And okay, tonight I kind of wanted to talk about when it's appropriate to resign or not. And the way that this kind of happened, I'll just give a little backstory for how tonight's lecture evolved into what I hope it's going to be. And we're going to do something a little more experimental. I like to mix things up and try new things in this class, so we'll try something a little different tonight. Um, during the Friday Action Quads this week, there's a player um, who comes to the club. He's, he's a regular now. He, uh, he probably doesn't want me to mention his name, but he's, he's rated just under 1,000. He can often play, you know, like he's twice his rating for the whole game. And then at the very end, he just blunders something from a completely winning position. And he's just blown so many winning positions that that keeps his rating down below 1,000. When really, I mean, I keep telling him, you know, you could just be a 1,600 player if you could just win these positions that you're just completely winning. Um, and I mean, I mean, he'll just be totally winning. He'll just be up like two queens and somehow still lose. It doesn't make any sense because he played the game so well. And something that I've done in the past with my private students, um, especially the ones that are, you know, 12 to 1,600 rated or, or whatever, uh, I give them positions where they're clearly better. And it's a good exercise because you can look at it from different perspectives. Like if it's sort of a newish player, you know, rated like a thousand, I might give them, okay, we both have two rooks, but you have the only open file. And just for fun, let's give you a knight or something. And so can you win this position? So I defend a lot of these really bad positions. And I've, I've noticed that, okay, I just get, try to get active, get counterplay. So we're going to sort of discuss the psychology of you know, being winning in the game versus a player that's losing during the game. So we're going to explore that, that theme a little bit. And uh, so sort of one of the things I wanted to talk about is, is when, when and when not to resign. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but let's just get this position on the board. Um, this was a game that was played in the Wednesday nights. And it was a game between Mr. Martin He and Zubin uh, Chandran. So... Uh, you, we'll be looking at... So Zubin won this game. He had the black pieces, and he was playing uh, Martin, who the internet knows as that salty character that played on the uh, Blitz Bounty with Mike Kummer. Um, and we won't talk too much about the opening. We're just going to get to the, the very last position in the game. They transposed to a French. It could have been a classical, so E5 here would be a normal move. But he decided to transpose into the exchange variation. And we're not going to worry so much about any of these opening moves. It's just... Um, the final position that we're going to care about here. Rook c8 is kind of whatever. Um, okay, he took the knight, which is not a great deal. Why would you give a knight away? A uh, bishop away for a, for a knight for no real reason. Um, and you guys can probably see it here, not you guys at home, but uh, VAR did the annotations for this game, so you guys get the inside scoop here if you can read them on the side. Um, c5, this was a really good move. So now, I mean, black is better in this position. And... Uh, he got to this position. Okay, and then some, some funny stuff happened. Some area. Okay. Rook A1 doesn't make any sense to me. But that's, that's not the point. Um, and here, I think White thought he had a little tactic. So, okay, so he miscalculated. And he took this pawn. And he must be thinking, all right, you take my knight. And I take here, and I, yeah, yeah, I want a pawn. But obviously, black doesn't have to do that. He can either just take this knight directly, or he can play what he played in the game, and now black is winning. Okay. So, okay, so a tactical blunder. And here, black decided to take back with the rook. And in this position, white resigned. Okay, you're down a piece. And, um... Okay, and I, okay it would have also just been better to have taken with the pawn, just with the idea that now you're protecting this rank, and you're not allowing any counterplay. So this is the position I want to talk about. Uh, and White resigned, but this is the, the challenge that I'm going to do for the class tonight. I'm going to take the White side, and I'm going to try to show the, uh, the potential to get activity in this position that White possibly has. Okay, Black, you're a piece up, um, so that's perfect. And I'll make my first move now. I'll just, all right, I'm going to take this pawn, and I'm going to get a lot of activity along this rank. Now, if you were playing in the Sinkfield Cup, <laughs> and this is the position on the board, okay, you should probably resign because you're playing the world's elite. But if you're playing in the Knights Tournament, or, you know, and if you're watching this video, you probably play amateur tournaments. Um, probably not a professional chess player, though I think some good people actually watch me. I'm always surprised. Um, 
But okay, if you're, you know, if you're just a normal club player, you probably shouldn't resign here. And so something kind of happens when the game psychologically changes a little bit once somebody is clearly winning in this position. So let me, let me just make my move on the board. Uh, and so you kind of want to think, how, how is White thinking in this position? What is he, what's going on in his mind? Well, as soon as you're, you're losing, you no longer have anything to lose, you know? And nothing else matters. Okay, I mean, oh, great, I got doubled pawns. Doesn't matter. What I'll, all I care about now is White is somehow I have to get activity, I have to drum up an attack, I have to somehow get some massive counterplay going in this position. And, okay, and as Black, you're kind of thinking, all right, I just need to consolidate, I need to construct a position where... Uh, I just neutralize all of White's pressure, and then I should be able to win because I'm up a piece. But it's not always that easy. Um, so I would never have resigned if, if I were playing in the Knights tournament in this position. And just because I've been playing around with this for a couple days now, um, so hof hopefully I can play well as, as White. We're going to see this kind of an experiment, uh, you know, taking a big risk playing the class. Uh, <laughs> but, but people, people like when people fail on the internet, so this could be, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll just mess up, but we have a, a really good editor out there. He's looking very good today, you know? Dressed really well tonight. I like it. Um, <laughs> it's important. You know, if you don't make him happy, then he'll you know, edit yeah, it. Yeah, he cuts things out. Yeah, right. Um, like that. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll give, I'll give you guys a, a minute here. So at home, if you want to plan as black and it's... Hopefully a little more, more dangerous for black than it looks at first blush. Then go ahead and pause your video. I'm going to give the class here a minute or two, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about this position. And, uh, okay, and if you haven't also done so too, again, we, we always want to be thinking sort of prophylactically what our opponents are thinking. Um, it is sort of very important to think, okay, if I were white, you know, how would I be getting any activity in this type of position? So uh, I don't want to give away too much because, you know, hopefully I can show off a few tricks in this position um, before the audience wises up. And, uh, yeah, you want to come in? All right. Hi there. What do you, what do you think of this position? Yeah. yeah, come here. You want to sit with me again? Yeah, mommy. Do you want to come sit with me? Do you want to sit with me, girl? Yeah. Yeah, that's mommy. Yeah. Do you want to sit with me? All right, good. You can help me out. You can help me out a little bit. All right. Um, okay. So does anybody here? Oh, good. We got some firepower coming in the room now. Uh, can we just keep that door shut? And then, uh, okay. Well, I, got my, I got my helper, so it's, it's two on four. Um, does anyone have a move they would like to suggest as black here. Knight e4, that's your suggestion. Okay. So the knight goes into e4. I had, I had two ideas here. I want to try this move. Queen g4. Okay, making a very obvious, very obvious threat. <laughs> Rook to c7. Okay, check. Where do you want to go? We're going to still go to King H. King uh, H8. King H8. Okay. Big mistake. Sorry, I forgot King H8. <laughs> uh, I, I can't play with one second, though. I'm that's fine. Neither can I, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a fair I'm match. All right, we'll see you. All right. Yep, you came in, blundered a piece, he's out. That's how it works. Let me shut this door. Um. Okay, but I mean, I, this, is, this is probably fine. So in this position, I think instead you have to go here. Um, and okay, I mean, at minimum, I, okay, I'm starting to get some sort of activity here at least. I'm getting something. Uh, it's definitely not enough, I don't think, but this is just sort of how I have to play this as white, and hopefully all these pawns will sort of confuse you, and okay, I assume this move. But... Uh, and, you know, so this probably shouldn't be enough for white, but I'm always trying to create as many problems as possible, which is what I have to do because I'm, I'm losing here. Um, 
So I don't feel like I, I completely refuted this move, but... Okay, because I mean, because you are, you are winning. Does, does anybody else have any other well, ideas, or do you want to talk about that? Well, I have an idea. Um, uh, as, as black? Yeah. So it does, yeah, you, there's this urge to, you know, okay, just go get him, and we can overwhelm him. But the thing of this position is, my pieces are really active, so I'm actually going to be creating threats. And I do have the possibility of mating you, or at least getting a really strong attack against your king. Uh, mostly because... I have a very, very active piece. So even though I have less pieces, what I need to do is make them more active than your pieces. So that even though I have less, they're doing more and causing you more problems. So I want you to have to like ball up all your pieces and defend. And okay, and eventually too, and I, I gotta focus on the, the positives. I do hope one day that I can make something um, of my pawns here. So, I mean, I'm hoping eventually I can get a passer. Okay, that might cause you some problems. So, you know, I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to focus on the good. Because if you just, you know, think about the bad in the position, you just, oh, and you resign. But uh, hopefully by the end of the night I can, you know, cause some problems and show that this position is not altogether so easy to just, you know, you just win because you're up a piece. I think there's some, a lot of practical problems that we might be able to cause here. So uh, we got a lot of new faces, so I'll go ahead and we'll... We'll start back at this position. So my last move was rook takes b7. And so uh, I'm playing as the white pieces here. You guys have black, you're a piece up. Um, and the challenge is, can you, can you win? We got some, some decent players now, so I think, I think we'll see. Um, yeah, knight e4 is a, is a good move, as we've seen. Is there any other? OK, excellent. Glad you asked. Yeah, what? A, Right, the very, you know, tempting move, you know, just take the pawn, I'll just keep taking your stuff. And we're going to see what the problem is. So this is a big square that I'm trying to make use of, e6. Obviously, I'm not going to go there right away because knight takes queen. But um, if I can get here, I can start making some threats. I'm trying to make threats along the seventh rank. So, okay, I'll play this move, h4, and I'll ask you where you're going to go. So now you have to make a decision with your knight. And wherever you go, I'm going to bring my queen somewhere very active. Knight e4. Knight e4, right? <laughs> seems, if knight, I'm yeah, now knight yeah, seems very logical. If knight e4, then what? Queen h5, but queen f7? Um, no. So I, again, this is where I'm trying to go. F3, then. Yeah. So f3, yeah. And I think now f3 is a lot better than it was in the other... Uh, version that we were looking at. Because, um, yeah, this seems seems still okay for black, doesn't it? No. No? Not for D4. Well, I mean, like D6. D3 is the only safe square, but I don't... D6, you mean? D6. That's not safe because of uh, Queen D6 check. Oh, yeah, so this... Check. So here's the problem, right? So now, uh, I am going to get a lot of activity. Here I come. And when you move... What move do I have? Well, you guys got to tell me. I don't know. Uh, but I have a uh, rook d7. So I'm at least getting material back here. So this is a big success for me. Um, I mean, so I mean, if you get this position, you don't resign as white, you know? Um, so that is my goal. And so you can kind of see, I have these ideas. You know, I'm going to somehow, I'm going to attack your knight. My queen's either coming in here. Um, okay, also I have other ideas. You know, I, I, somehow I'm going to get my queen to some really, really active square. I'm going to cause you a lot of, a lot of problems here. But, uh, okay, we'll go back. So don't taking so the pawn is, is not good. Three, maybe just try and simplify the move your extra knight. Like yeah. Maybe something like rook c7. Rook c7. Okay, this is a mistake. Okay. Now the last person that made this mistake just left the room. <laughs> They're all like, oh, I've blundered my feet. And then, it's, it's true. Were you here? I, Were you here you when, when he left? It, probably. Was it Owen? Yeah, it's, so it's a slightly different position, but it's the same so same blunder. I, All right, more, I take it. I'm more accustomed to mm. doing it. Um. <laughs> so that, this is the point. Uh, yeah, if, so you can't take the rook. So you yeah, just you no, blundered no, your rook. Yeah, blundered my rook. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. But stay here. Don't go. Please. I'm not a, Please. You know, You're the highest rated player in the room, so don't go. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that is right. So it does highlight there's there is a lot of, of danger here. 
based on, okay, you've played this move F6, which is already sort of a weakening move. I'm trying to, you know, focus on so the, my potential here. Someone didn't go to the finals. But. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, F6 was all right when it was played, but, you know, I, it does give me some, some chances now. Though, We're going to win. Uh, yeah, you're up a knight. You're going to win. You're going to win. We did. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I took on B7. Your turn. But I'm glad you said that because I was, I was hoping somebody would say that. Yeah, you're trying to make a fool out of themselves. What are you doing? We're both in bed. Okay, let's see. And hopefully, when we, we do this enough, you'll start to see all of my ideas, and then you'll you'll be able to defend, and then hopefully, the class is able to win this position tonight. So I think. Okay. Yeah. Do you, want to, do you want to try it? Sure. You want to go for it? Knight of yeah, seven? Uh, so if I put this over here, will it not? Okay. Okay, so this is, you know, starting to go my way a little bit. Now, you know, you imagined it before. Now my queen and my rook, they're both awesome pieces. Your knight's pinned. Your queen's only job is to defend the knight. Um... So, okay, I take this. And then I'm going to take your D-pawn. And then there's there's one trick that you have, because I've already looked at this position in my prep. <laughs> um, but there's a chance I can fall for a tactical mistake. So let me blunder, because that's fun. All right, if, if you take here, here, here. Yeah, okay, I see it now. Some, some, yeah. some move. I don't know. Let me just make some random then move. You push him to H2 and then you yeah. The rook with so there's this idea too. So it's check and you pick up the rook. So I can blunder too, you know. It's and it's funny too that the white queen, like you're not getting back on the back rank, um, you know. So it's like darn, I don't get to like do funny back rank stuff. Um, okay, so there's there's that trick in the position, but really after here, I'll just play a move like G3 or something. So that if you check me, I just step up and, I mean, I don't know, you're a little tied down and I got two pass pawns, you know, I'm gonna start pushing my A pawn. Um, Knight F7 is, is probably not the best move, but it's, you know, it's like, you're kinda, it's like, ah, oh, it should be so easy to defend. Yeah, I just bring my pieces back. Yeah, yeah, so but it's no, really no, not no, that easy. That, yeah. uh, you wanna play Rook C8? Sure. Maybe. Sure, yeah, sure. Um, Sure. You want me to take on a7? Sure. And then I, like, queen e8, just try and simplify. Queen e8. All right. Well, I don't want to simplify. All right. I don't want to trade with you. Okay. No trade. Okay, and then yeah, you're seeing my potential. I'm gonna have to keep you away before I do that. But you thought I'd play a4? Fine, I'll play a4 if that's what you. <laughs> if that's what you worried about, I'm sure that seems fine. Welcome back. All right, they haven't beaten me yet, so I'm doing okay. Ugh. Oh, where'd she go? Oh, she keeps dropping you off, and then she just leaves. Where does she go? Where does she go? All right, go find her. Be safe out there. Okay, now you want to play 94s. You're breaking the, the connection of my pieces here. Um, oh, does this work? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be tricky. I'm gonna play. Okay, makes sense. And that's, yeah, so that's, that's true. You're trying to just simplify. So I have to really do my best to avoid trades. Um, I got to keep all the pieces on the board and I have to keep making threats. So I'm always, I'm always just going to be looking for <laughs> um, ways to make some big threats here. And Okay, so I don't feel like this was a real success. I feel like you're just kind of... Um, I'd, I'd hate to say it's lazy play, but it's, it's sort of... It is lazy play. Um, Let's see. Okay, so I just took on B7. Um, so you really do need a plan to stop me from doing all of my uh, my tricks here. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Oh, 
Rook c6. An excellent move. Thank you. Well, An now excellent I'm move. Just to me how, like, how yeah, this is the best move. Is, is so oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this I've been looking at a lot. So this is the, the main line, the computer line. And, you know, a computer will say, you know, you're like uh, plus two or something. You know, it's like you're up two points. Okay. So it's, I have a, some small compensation for the, the piece that you have. I mean, I got some extra pawns. And, you know, that's, that's what I got going for me. But, I mean, it shouldn't be enough. Um, and there's a bunch of tricky tries here, I think. But first of all, I'm, gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to start out with the good stuff. All right? I'm not, we're not going to start out strong. We're just gonna, I'm just going to illustrate some points. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to take this. Okay. I'll come back. I'll play. I'll play better when you guys play better. So you have to be careful. Okay, it's an interesting move. Um, so I do. I do have to be careful. I can't let this happen. So I'm actually in some some danger. Okay, so I'm gonna not let you do that by putting. Yeah, I'll make my own moves. <laughs> I'll play queen b5. Um, okay, so now you can't check me on the first rank and then play here. I've I've stopped that. See, that's not your idea. Stopped you. Um, hooray for me. But now... So, okay, how would you guys like to continue now? I mean, this... I guess just for the sake of time, let me try to play the... the hardest move. Now, I don't objectively think it's the best move, but I think... Okay, either h4 or even f4 here is very, very tricky... Um, I have a really sneaky idea. My idea is if you go here, I play here, and this is incredibly dangerous. <laughs> um, and in fact, there's only one move for black. Otherwise, you lose. This is my, this is my really, really tricky idea. Um. So this is a, a nice challenge, and at home you might want to pause your video here, because this is... Can you find the move? There's only one move here. And that's sort of the way that I want to play as white. This variation is not, you know, the most objectively best way to play if you're an engine. You know, you put it on the engine, and it's like, oh, you just lost some smidge of an advantage as white. How could you even consider F4? Well, I'm playing humans, and... Yeah, I want to cause as many practical problems. And you can take some risks, and it's not that much of a risk to play this way. I mean, okay, there's always the risk that he's going to defend properly and win the game. But by making it so that you have to find only moves in order to survive, there's the real possibility that even if I'm playing a, a decently strong player, you know, they might not play right here. And I think if you look at it, you'll notice that there's some, some problems to solve here as black. Um... So this is a big issue. Um, so if, you know, you just casually go here, I mean, I take here, check, I'm on your rook, your knight, you know, everything's falling apart. So you, you have to be really careful. We can make this blunder again, because that's fun. That, this, this one doesn't get old. Um, so you do have to be careful. There's a lot of... A lot of possibility to go wrong. And it's exactly how you want to play this when you're down a piece. Knight to d6? Okay, so knight d6 is a move that you kind of want to play. Unfortunately, you've blocked the connection between the queen and your d-pawn. I'll take here check. I'm on your king. I'm on your rook. Um, so, you know, okay, if you move somewhere, I don't know where, where you want to go. Yeah, I got it. I guess it's not there. Take it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, this is not right. Okay. No, but that's definitely, you know, that's one of the defensive moves you want to take into account. But it doesn't work. You know, these, this idea of, of blocking with this or blocking with this or blocking with this, it's, just, it's really difficult to play when white has so much activity. And that's sort of the point. And, okay, another blunder we can make is here. Okay, that's a nice way to block, but not for a while. Okay. Um, eh, or here, whichever one I like. I haven't decided. I'd have to think about it for... I'd have to think about it for more time, and we're, we're running low on time. So. Uh, 
Yeah, so how are you going to deal with this threat on F7? So you need to make sure and think about think about my turn. Okay. Let's give your opponent the turn. Your opponent is me. So, okay, I'm going to play here. And so your king's going to go here. And my threat is obviously on G7. So you can make it such that when my queen lands on F7, you have time to protect your G-pawn. You can't right now because you'd be in check. If I play queen f7, it's check. So the only move, and hopefully I've given it away, king h8. So this is the only move. Okay, it's not the end of your trouble, though. Let me see. I don't remember. Do I take on a7, or do I play queen f7? I think I... Uh, uh, right, no, okay, no, no, I'll take here. I got an idea. Okay. Because sometimes what I want to do is I want to go here and threaten mate. But I also have this other trick that I can use sometimes in this position. I can go here to threaten, yeah, rook okay. So I got some really sneaky ideas. You know, I'm trying to stay ahead of the class. But this is uh, winning. This is winning for black. So, okay. So you can go to g8. And this is kind of the move that I'm hoping to see because that, you know, me and your queen's not better on g8. Um, and I didn't have to threaten anything to force you to do it, so... All right, I'm just gonna wait. And even my waiting moves are strong. I mean, I'm pushing my pawns, so in four or five moves from now, you that <laughs> that might be a very serious issue. Um, I suspect that this is fine for you, though. Do you want to? You want to play here? Yeah, you're No, it seems fine. Um, King H two. I can push my pawn. Uh, eh, I'll, I'll resist the urge. I'll resist the urge to attack you once. What's that? Yeah, it's tempting to attack a rook once. It's tempting. <laughs> but, uh, okay, but I see you're... You might come down and check me, so I'll just get out of the way now. Um, you know, so I, my rook is still just... Super monster. Queen's doing a good job. Yeah, big deal. Big deal you got an extra knight. Okay. Yeah, so you just go there anyway. Okay. Ah, uh, no, there's rook h1. Okay, you have a you have a threat. Okay. You have a threat. Is that your threat? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, you are. How do I stop it? How do I stop it? And this Leroux is too good. He's too good. He's too good. Uh, if I go here. Oops. No, wrong somehow. Yeah, that didn't change anything. That was a joke. That was a funny, funny joke. Okay. All right, got it. All right, I got it. Rook h1, and I just play king g2. That's my idea. Anyone want to play rook c1? Yeah, yeah, it's already out of time, right? Mm hmm, we're running out of time. So, hmm. Rook d7. All right, break this out. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I don't. I re yeah. Is there a reason you're just not taking my pawn? Nope. Yeah, rook c2. Field dragon is the first rank, of course. I have to be kind of. Ooh, I have to be kind of careful. Okay. Well, I mean, okay. I have to go here. Tempted to go here. No, if I take on like d5 or something. Hey, Blaze! Did you go to Mr. Andrew's class? Did you go over how the knights move? You gonna sit down and watch? <laughs> Alright. You wanna repeat? 
to threaten. Maybe I'll fall for it. Maybe I'll go, go somewhere. Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. You think we can simplify here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should. You're gonna trade queens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't get back ring mated, but these things can be avoided. Okay. King G8, okay, you don't want to get mated on the background. I don't want you to take my G pawn. So I push. You had a chance. You had a yeah, chance to I take it. Um, right. Don't know why you didn't take it, but. Do you want it? Do you want to take it? I'll do anything to speed along you guys beating me. Um, I mean, I assume you're still winning, but. So I don't, I don't really understand why you didn't take my I, I just, pawn I, or. Okay, you want it, you want to take it this time? For the audience. Yes. <sighs> King H two kind of fast, but. All right, King H two. And get behind the A pawn. Okay, yes. you're gonna go after my pawn? How dare you? Oh shit. <laughs> Family show, there's little kids. King G8, okay. He doesn't like to get mated. Yeah. Very understandable. Very understandable. Okay. Alright, now you want to get behind the A. Okay. I attack my pawn. Okay. So this seems reasonable. Uh, I will play here. And you want to play knight d5? <clears throat> um, don't don't take me. Okay. Still not incredibly easy. Yeah. But I do think that King G8 can win the uh win the uh at this point. King G eight and knight knight d seven. The king's on G eight. I mean king I'm sorry, King F eight and then uh King F eight and knight ninety seven, I don't know how the how the how the five okay. point can be defended. Um no. Wait. Uh you said Okay. You can at least try to make it difficult. Yeah, you just defend it. Okay. Yeah. Well, then maybe can I uh, get in front of the knight? Do you want to go this way? Now you're gonna go to D six. Mm. Okay, so okay, so you go here. Uh, go here, I guess. Okay. Now you can just take on a five. Yeah. Just take on a five, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, it's it's bleak, but I've won worse positions, so. And that is sort of the thing, too, that, that happens. Um, and, okay, so as embarrassing as it is, I've been playing people you know, five, six hundred points lower rated than me, and I've been losing before. But it doesn't matter. So I've even, I was showing, I showed somebody this, this game just the other day, and it was, so I was playing somebody, and I guess he was like 14 or 1500, whatever he was. I was down a rook, none of my pieces were developed, king wide open. I always knew I'd win. 
So he was just crushing me. It was like the computer's monstrous numbers, but it, it didn't matter because I found a way. I just swindled them and tricked them. And, you know, it was just sort of the same thing. I just tried to get really active pieces. I tried to cause as many problems as possible. And I, I you know, I just, I found some tactics that just worked out. Um, and so I was able to do it. And it's been, I've been on the other side too. You know, I'm playing very strong players that are 500 points higher rated than me, crushing them. And then the same thing happens, you know, they just keep finding ways. And the higher rated you are, the more you are in a, in a losing position, the more capable you are of causing problems and making it difficult to always find the right moves for your opponent. Um, so that's something you'll notice higher rated players just do really well, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's fine, okay, good, you're, you're beating a grandmaster, but then to win from that winning position is actually still quite a feat, you know? It's, okay, just because you're, you're beating a grandmaster doesn't mean you're, you're gonna win. And it's true of whatever level you are. If you're 700 and you're playing at 1100, you know, it's just, it's great, you know, you're winning, um, but it just, to actually win, you actually have to play very accurately. It's, it's a difficult art just playing from behind um, and still still winning. So even when you're ahead, you still have to win. It's, it's not easy. But, uh, okay, for time, we'll have to end it here. I think... That pretty well does it. I, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you guys this one. I think it's time for me to resign. Um, I, would, you know, I would never resign here. I'd just keep fighting. But that's sort of the, the idea. It, I, w I won't worry too much about, oh, it's, maybe it's impolite to keep playing or whatever. You know, if you're at the, the elite level, <laughs> you know, okay, you should have resigned here a long time ago. But if you're not playing in the Sinkfield Cup, you know, you're playing at the local tournament. You're playing in the Knights and the Friday Action Quads. You don't want to resign. You want to keep fighting here and find ways to pose as many problems to your opponent as possible. Make it very difficult for him to win. And uh, at home, let me know if you like this format. Is this something you want to do again? The lecturer versus the audience. Uh, we could find, you know, we could do this again in some other sort of format, some other game or some other position. I just wanted to, let's just go back really quick here. We'll go all the way back to the very first position. Um, we'll just go back to this position on the board um and so again it's it seems so easy you know you're a piece up everything you're just cruising but you know the surprising ability of white to find ways to enter into this position actually posed lots and lots of problems so you did have to think about your opponent's play and consolidate in a very unusual way so uh if you liked it go ahead yeah hit like hit share subscribe tell everybody in the world <laughs>